The Mixolydian mode, or the Mixolydian scale, is exactly the same as our usual major scale, however it has a lowered 7th degree. The lowered 7th degree of the Mixolydian scale gives it a mellow, relaxed, but yet also bold quality. Mixolydian is sort of like the major scale's cooler, younger brother. A great example of the Mixolydian scale is Clocks by Coldplay. The main melody and iconic piano riff are both in E-flat Mixolydian, as we can see from the lowered 7th degree here. If Clocks was instead in E-flat major rather than E-flat Mixolydian, it would sound like this. As you can hear, it still sounds absolutely fine, but it loses that open, intriguing Mixolydian quality. Bittersweet Symphony by The Verve remains 100% in E-Mixolydian, giving it an open, epic quality. If I adjust Bittersweet Symphony so it's an E major rather than Mixolydian, you will hear that it loses that open quality and instead sounds far more directional and typical. Another 100% Mixolydian song is Royals by Lord. We can see the lowered seventh, the C natural in this case, in the vocal harmony and also in the chord progression. With a name like Mixolydian, you'd be forgiven for thinking that the scale was somehow obscure or unusual. But as we can see from the examples we've already looked at so far, this scale can be incredibly common. In fact, in rock music in particular, the Mixolydian scale is probably more common than the major scale. The main guitar riff and verse melody from Sweet Child of Mine is Mixolydian. Although the melody of both the riff and vocal never actually use that 7th degree of the scale, the Mixolydian note, the Mixolydian sound is introduced to the song by this C flat chord, C flat being the flattened 7th degree. So even though the melody itself isn't inherently Mixolydian, the harmonic context in which we're hearing it sets it in a Mixolydian sound. If this chord was instead an A flat chord, it would place us instead in a typical major scale sound. Mixolydian is such a common choice in rock music as it's less directional. Unlike the major scale, Mixolydian doesn't yearn to resolve as much. We don't feel such a clear sense of tension and release, and this results in a mellower, smoother tonality. The seventh degree of the major scale is what gives it such a strong sense of resolution. Known as the leading tone, the seventh degree of the major scale is only a semitone away from the tonic, and therefore it really wants to resolve upwards onto that tonic note. This is, for example, what gives a perfect cadence its tension. The leading tone, which is present in the dominant chord here, pulls us up onto that tonic chord, creating the sense of resolution. However, because Mixolydian lowers that seventh degree, lowers the leading tone, it weakens this sense of direction and resolution. The seventh note now has to travel twice the distance to resolve upwards, and is actually now closer to the sixth degree below it. So although we still get a sense of tension and release in the Mixolydian scale, everything is far more patient and laid back, because we haven't got that strong, ever-present pull upwards to resolution. A very common Mixolydian chord progression is 1, flat 7, 4, and then back to 1. We've already seen this progression today in Royals, and in Sweet Child of Mine, but there are plenty more examples we could look at.
This progression establishes that open mixolydian sound in a super efficient and effective way. The major tonic chord establishes our key center. Then the flat seven chord makes it abundantly clear that we're using the flat seven of mixolydian, not the unaltered seventh of the major scale. And then the flat seven resolves nicely down onto the fourth chord of the key by means of a perfect fourth. Then to wrap it all up, we get that same movement down a perfect fourth to resolve us back to the home tonic chord from which we can then repeat the progression. Cars by Gary Newman is largely based on the A mixolydian scale. This is established by the song's classic synth riff, which features that mixolydian lowered seventh. If Cars instead used the unaltered seventh of the major scale, it would sound like this. The major scale sounds far more resolved and completed, meaning that every iteration of this riff sounds like a completed cadence. The Mixolydian lowered seventh has a far more open, unresolved sound, lending the music a sense of forward momentum because it never gets that strong, definite resolution. The riff can just continue rolling forward forever. Now, of course, Mixolydian isn't just a scale, it's also a mode, a mode of the major scale. A mode is when you take a scale, like the major scale, but then treat a different note as the tonic note, as the centre of gravity. Mixolydian is the fifth mode of the major scale, so if we take C major for example, but treat the fifth degree, G, as the tonic note, as the root of the scale, then we get G mixolydian. This means that a song in C major and a song in G mixolydian will draw from the same set of seven notes, but will treat them differently. Most importantly, in C major, the music will resolve on the note C, and in G mixolydian, the music will resolve on the note G. Mixolydian is often thought of of having a bluesy sound. In fact, Mixolydian is almost like a halfway house between the major scale and the blues scale. Mixolydian has the lowered seventh degree of the blues scale, but not the minor third or lowered fifth. Miles Davis's All Blues, from his iconic modal jazz album Kind of Blue, is based on the G Mixolydian scale. As you can hear, this piece is very much a blues, but with a slightly brighter edge thanks to the major third of the Mixolydian scale. A great example of Mixolydian's mellow, laid-back sound is All Night Long by Lionel Richie. The entire song remains in A-flat Mixolydian. Now, because All Night Long only ever uses the seven notes of the A-flat Mixolydian scale, instead of writing it down like this with an A-flat major key signature and then flattening every seventh degree, it would be more efficient if we just wrote it down with a D-flat key signature, as because A-flat Mixolydian is a mode of D-flat major, they both use the exact same seven notes, and therefore can use the exact same key signature. But this can sometimes lead to some confusion. For example, on the music notes page for All Night Long, it describes the song as being in D flat major, not A flat mixolydian, because it uses a D flat major key signature. But of course, it's important to remember that even though most songs using a five flat key signature will be in D flat major, the song could also be in one of the modes of D flat major, like B flat minor or A flat mixolydian. The key signature will always tell you which notes a song is going to use, but it won't necessarily tell you which one of those notes is the tonic note. Sometimes, songs will just stay in Mixolydian for perhaps one section, and then for the next section it will switch to a different parallel scale. For example, Norwegian Wood by the Beatles begins in E Mixolydian, as we can see from the lowered seventh degree here, the D natural. However, for the middle eight, we switch to the parallel scale of E Dorian. Anyway. 
Dorian has a very slightly darker sound than Mixolydian, thanks to its lowered third, its minor third. So by switching from E Mixolydian to E Dorian, we can hear a shift in tonality from light to dark. A similar example is Burn the Witch by Radiohead. Burn the Witch starts out in F sharp Mixolydian, vamping between the tonic chord F sharp major and the lowered seventh chord E major. However, when we reach the chorus, the tonality shifts from F sharp Mixolydian to F sharp minor, or what we could call F sharp Aeolian. As you can hear, this is an even more notable shift in sound from bright to dark. As I discussed before in my modal spectrum video, the minor scale, or Aeolian, is two degrees darker than Mixolydian as we have to flatten two different scale degrees to turn Mixolydian into Aeolian, the third and the sixth. The shift from Mixolydian to Dorian though that we saw in Norwegian Wood is less pronounced as Dorian is only one degree darker than Mixolydian. All we have to do to shift from Mixolydian to Dorian is to flatten the third. If you'd like to learn more about how different modes can give us different levels of tonal brightness, then do check out my modal spectrum video. I think Mixolydian is probably my favourite mode to jam around in, so I couldn't resist but to finish this video with a little piece I've put together that remains entirely in the A Mixolydian scale. As I mentioned before, Mixolydian is a particularly common choice of mode, so there are plenty more examples out there of Mixolydian music that I haven't mentioned, so if you can think of a good example of the Mixolydian mode in action, then do leave it in the comments down below. And as always, a massive, massive thanks goes to everyone who supports me on Patreon, including the names you see on screen right now, and Andre Sainz Diaja, Andy Deacon, Andrew, Andrew Brown, Andrew Sussman, Austin Barrett, Austin Russell, Bob McKinstry, Brittany Parker, Cameron Orvilla, Colin Aiken, Chris Cabal, Christopher Ryan, David Rivers, Donald Howard, Dr. Darren Wicks, Elena Skorchenko, Eugene Leroy, FD Hodor, Greg Kabofsky, Gil Lamola Toner, Hamish Brocklebank, Hernick Kutcher, Hugo Miller, James Keo, J.A. Hokensberger, John Dye, Josh Sanderlin, Justin Vigger, Lee Lauridsen, Mark Siegenhagen, Max O'Keefe, Melody Composer Squared, Melanie Schonert, Michael Vivian, Nancy Gillard, Nathan Lawrence, Nathaniel Park, Paul Muller, Paul Paisel, Peter Dunphy, Richard Pride, Roger Clay, Sean Kennedy, Steve Daly, Stephen Lazaro, Tim Beaker, Homer Aharoni, Trisha Adams, Tim Payne, Victor Levy, Vidad Flowers, Vladimir Kodakov, Volti, and Waylon Fairbanks.